smooth movement, flashy animations, and fast-paced combat can go a long way to carry me through an otherwise derivative experience. Games like 30XX or Blaz Blue Entropy Effect can easily distract you from a lackluster narrative, because the tight gameplay was always the draw. Sanabi from Wonder Potion checks many of the same boxes, but it would be a mistake to dismiss it as all flash and no substance, as those ideas are used to great effect even if we've seen some of them before. It's an amazingly stylish action platformer that centers a grappling hook as the core of its movement and combat options, all set in a dystopian, far future Korea. The story sees a veteran soldier pulled back into the life he left. You play as the general, a living legend whose stoic demeanor is juxtaposed with his garish, military issued cybernetic chain arm. He spends his days of retirement playing with his adorable hyperactive daughter, before enemies from his past force him out of hiding with an attack on his home. The game's narrative slowly evolves from a straightforward revenge tale into a mystery box of corporate conspiracy and sci-fi quandaries. Its pacing may be a pain point for many, as you won't start to get answers to any of the big questions posed until the last stretch of the game. The plot is primarily told through dialogue between characters either in the present or in flashbacks. These scenes routinely bookend gameplay and can be pretty lengthy, especially in the final exposition-heavy chapter. That being said, while I do wish the story could have been better paced, I ended up extremely invested in the events. The world building hints at factions and happenings loosely connected to your character that have important ramifications in the quest. The easing of the tense relationship between the general and Mari, a young hacker he meets in the city, is genuinely entertaining and at times heartwarming. The gameplay carries its weight as well, as your chain arm can latch onto surfaces and swing you with velocity, or zip you towards its anchor point. You can boost while swinging, cling to walls and ceilings, and can even slow time to give you better accuracy on where you want to anchor. It's a quality grappling hook mechanic in a day and age that isn't short on them. But there's a reason they keep showing up, and it's because slinging yourself through a room of projectiles and into range of an enemy for a lightning fast strike feels like the perfect combination of luck and skill. Attacking enemies practically teleports you directly to them, and holding the button grabs them, allowing you to move them around the area for better vantage points. It's a lot of fun and looks cool as hell to rapidly take down lower level enemies, and at times it heavily resembles the likes of Katana Zero, which has one of the most satisfying one-hit kill mechanics in games. The platforming, however, is the real star. Stages challenge your reflexes and force you to think fast as you swing to avoid electrified surfaces or red zones where you'll be shot immediately. Later skills like a homing attack or the ability to use remote drones to disable hazards ramp up the challenge but some situations that mix enemies with the platforming can feel pretty cheap, as you don't always have a full view of all the danger in the space with you. Boss encounters are a standout though. Each one is a unique spectacle that truly tests your mastery of the game's systems. In one fight, I had to avoid a giant mechanical eyes atomizer by racing to reach the safety of spread out blast shields, while in another, I had to quickly navigate a maze as a death laser bared down on me from ever-changing angles. They also naturally tie into the story, properly teasing the impending showdown between you and a threat that had hounded you prior. These incredible moments are all greatly aided by remarkably vibrant and detailed pixel art. The characters and the locations they inhabit drip with personality, and the animation work clearly showcases how skilled and amazing both you and your enemies are. The backgrounds are gorgeous, and it's clear that a great amount of effort has gone into framing certain scenes as cinematically as you can imagine. There are fantastic visual set pieces that recreate some of the most iconic looks and stylings from award-winning movies. I can't stress enough how impressive Sanabi's artwork and animations are to witness. The only gripes I can muster aside from the story pacing are minor. Death takes a little longer to reset than I would like, and I also noticed a consistent amount of typos and bad grammar in the script. It's nothing that harmed my enjoyment too much, but I would sometimes have to reread a line to understand what was trying to be said. Overall, I loved Sanabi. I'm a sucker for a good action game, to the point that a bad story factors very little in my opinion on something of this scale. But Sanabi put in the work to make his narrative a contributing factor to its appeal. Its ending actually made me tear up. While it's not charting new ground on any of these fronts, its execution on them should be praised. I'm as guilty as the next critic for sometimes chasing the addictive high of a brand new experience. But there's something to be said for the excellent execution of a pre-existent blueprint. I mean, there's a reason we liked it in the first place, right? Games like Death's Door and Lies of P are great examples of titles that don't stray far from their inspirations, yet feel like standouts in their field. Sanabi is no different. 
It both leverages its influences and forges its own path to provide an experience that feels bigger than its humble pixel art aesthetic might suggest. 